for doing Mornings with Jesus and welcome. It has been a while since I have been able to do this program and I'm very thankful to be back on it again. Um, I was hoping to watch myself as I did this, so let me see if I can do that to make sure everything's going great. Since this is live, I think it's going to let me. Okay, great. Praise the Lord. Uh, the talk I'm going to do this morning, uh, to begin our day with Jesus, is about angels. I studied about them a couple days ago, and I hadn't done that for a while. God created angels, and a third of the angels went with Lucifer, who is now called Satan. But God still has two-thirds and enough for all of us, believe me. Let's begin with Colossians 2, verse 18. And if you have your Bibles, it'd be wonderful if you followed along with me. It says, let no man beguile you of your reward. in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So the verse is telling us there not to listen to the people who might beguile us as a snake beguiled Eve in the Garden of Eden to worship angels. They're, we're not to worship them. They're our fellow servant as we will find as we go along. Yes, in Revelation 19 verse 10 it tells us that. John was speaking with an angel in Revelation and he says in Revelation 19 verse 10 and I fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me see thou do it not I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship God and for the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So it's telling us, do not worship angels. Now we go to Matthew 18.10. And it tells about the children here and about angels. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. The home that is beautified by love, sympathy, and tenderness is a place angels love to visit and where God is glorified. The influence of a carefully guarded Christian home in the years of childhood and youth is the surest safeguard 
against the corruptions of the world. In the atmosphere of such a home, the children would learn to love both their earthly parents and their heavenly father. So we know that our home should be a place where angels love to dwell because the angels of our little ones always behold the face of my father, Jesus said. Again, that is in Matthew 18, verse 10. Let's go to Psalms 91. And we're going to read verses 11, starting at verse 11. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Do I have the right one? No, I don't. 91 verse 10. I'm sorry. There's verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. You see, in all ages, angels have been near Christ's faithful followers. The vast confederacy of evil is arrayed against all who are trying to overcome. But Christ would have us look to the things which are not seen, to the armies of heaven encamped about those who love God to deliver them from what dangers, seen and unseen, we have been preserved through the interposing of angels that we shall never know until in the light of eternity we see the providences of God. Then we shall know that the whole family of heaven was interested in the family here below and that messengers from the throne of God attended our steps from day to day. Again, Psalms 91 verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's beautiful. Let's go now to Ephesians 6, verse 12. And it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In 2 Kings 19 verse 35, This is what happened with the strength of one angel sent from God. 
And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians, killed in the camp of the Assyrians, a hundred four score, and a score is 20, so 80, and 5,000, 185,000. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So there was some witnesses left. So they could go tell the king of Assyria what had happened. How mysterious that must have been. A few woke up and saw everybody had been killed. In one night, an angel did that. The spirits of darkness will battle for the soul under their dominion. But the angel of God will contend for that soul with prevailing power. That means they will win. The Lord says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? Thus saith the Lord, even the captains of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee. And parents, pray for your children and claim this promise, because next it says, I will save thy children. Isaiah 49. Verse 24. Okay, we are going to continue here. Let's go to Hebrews 13, verses 1 through 2. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained strangers unaware. Not until the providences of God are seen in the light of eternity shall we understand what we owe and to the interposition of his angels. Celestial beings have taken an active part in the affairs of men. They have appeared in garments that shone in lightning. They have come as men in the garb of wayfarers, travelers. They have accepted the hospitalities of human homes. They have acted as guides to benighted travelers. They have thwarted the spoiler's purpose and turned aside the stroke of the destroyer. Angels have benefited us our whole lives, but we don't know it because we don't see them. Rarely does a person see an angel. You know, and, and we need to be careful who we walk by and don't help. Who we allow to go hungry. And how we judge people, whether we should help them or not. <clears throat> If you remember Jesus, 
in his days of ministry helped those enslaved in sin and no one was afraid to come to him with their needs because they knew he would not judge them and condemn them and turn them away. But he helped them and loved them. So we have today undesirables, people that we consider um, in, in addiction of a lot of different kinds and not spending their money correctly and things like that. We are to help everybody and let God be concerned of the outcome. It doesn't mean to feed money for them to get the things that they're addicted to, but it does mean to make sure they have food, they have water, and a couple dollars is not going to buy them anything that God doesn't understand. And that way, on their conscience, they will know that God sent you to them, and they used it in the wrong way. But we're not to be concerned with that, you see. We are just to give of ourselves to all as Jesus did and follow his example. Now let's go to Hebrews 1, 14. Speaking of the angels, he said, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Every redeemed one will understand the ministry of angels in his whole lot, own life. The angel who was his guardian from his earliest moment, the angel who watched his death, and covered his head in the day of peril. The angel who was with him in the valley of the shadow of death. Who marked his resting place. Who was the first to greet him in the resurrection morning. What will to behold converse with him. And learn the history of divine interposition in the individual life of heavenly cooperation in every work for humanity. The angels are sent by God in cooperation with us to help us obtain eternal life. Praise the Lord, we have a guardian angel who is with us all the time. You see, we're never alone. We're never alone. Our angels with us, and if we need those to guard us from Satan, which I'm sure most of us do, he sends more. Praise God. Psalms 34, verse 7. Let's go there. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. If we fear or respect the Lord, then you know the angels are going to be there because they love their commander so much. And as the praying ones continue, continue their earnest cries, as those of us are praying today, for all the evils and catastrophes in the world. And darkness presses upon them to shut out Jesus from their view, that their eyes might be drawn to darkness that surrounds them. 
They may be led to distrust God and murmur against him, but their only safety is keeping their eyes directed upward. Angels of God have charge over his people. And as the poisonous atmosphere of evil angels press around anxious ones, angels are continually waving their wings over them to scatter the thick darkness. At a time when Jesus comes to them to encourage their hearts and light up their countenance, some I saw did not participate in the work of agonizing and pleading in prayer. They seemed indifferent and careless. And I have got to stop here, folks, because I am seeing time and time again how people are just thinking, it doesn't matter. Or they're thinking that everything's going to end up okay. And, and, and it makes me cry. They're being indifferent and careless. Because the world has carried them away. They are not resisting the darkness around them. And it shuts them in like a thick cloud. So the angels of God don't stay with them, but they go to the praying ones. And they go to their assistants who are struggling with the powers of evil to resist them. And they're trying to help themselves by calling upon God and having perseverance. so thankful for the ministry of angels and what they do in our lives to help us as we journey towards our heavenly goal and the second coming of Christ. Now I have down here Psalms 103 starting with verse 19. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening under the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The person that is steadfast and adhering to the principles of truth has the assurance that his weakest points of character may become his strongest points. Heavenly angels are close by him who strives to bring his life into harmony with God and his holy law. God is with him as he declares, I must overcome the temptations that surround me or they will drive Christ from my heart. So the angels are ministering angels there to help us along with this. Where it said, again, where I read about the angels, that they always behold the face of the Father. I want to say a little something about the Christian home. Um, there's so much corruption we see in the world because parents have neglected to do their duty. And um, 
as sin lies at their door. You know, Satan stands by and he's so happy and he, and it makes him so exalted that when we permit children to pass into his hands, are we watching what our children are viewing and hearing? Are we reading them scripture and praying with them? Don't indulge your children in evil ways. But from the very time of a baby, let them see that you love the Lord and that you want to train them up the way he wants you to. Our blessed Savior taught us to pray, Our Father who art in, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Do you realize the meaning of this prayer? Do you realize that we must hallow that name in our families? And if we allow our children to manifest the attributes of Satan, that name is not hallowed in our homes. If you want the holy angels to take charge of your little ones, you must bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and teach them to hallow the name of God. Teach them to say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But do you teach them the meaning of this prayer? Do you teach them that the kingdom of God must be seen in your household and the will of God must be done by them and you? Do you break the force of this petition by shaking them, striking them in anger, by speaking harsh words and manifesting passion Do not do this. Do not do this, but be kind and tender-hearted. Let the will of the Lord be done in your family, not the will of the enemy. If mild measures won't work, you must use the rod. You must give your children to understand that God must be honored in your home. But this work is sadly neglected. Do you wonder that God does not walk through the midst of us when we allow Satan to work his way in our household? And when we neglect the solemn obligations that God has placed on us, our children are just lent to us from God. They're God's children. Of what avail will be the list of church resolutions if we have not the Spirit of God in our home? How, how is our church going to prosper if we don't have the Spirit of God in our home? And we come to church and we're not a blessing when we go there. Christ is watching to see who are training their families for the great family above. Suppose one of your little children, whom you have failed to correct, should be taken away in one of its fits of temper. What would be the result? I leave you to answer that question. I didn't always do right with my children. I didn't marry a Christian man. And he promised me a Christian home, but I wasn't able to have one. But I loved them. And I talked to them about the Savior. 
and I taught them respect for me. And the way we are is the way they will see God because we are the prominent figure in their life. They knew obedience, but they knew love. And I know one person that before they ever spanked their child, they prayed with them and talked with them. Please let the Holy Spirit and angels come into your home. I think morning worship is necessary with the children and evening story and prayer. Don't make the worship hard and, and uh, adult-like. Make it for the children simple like Jesus would do. Well, let's move on to 1 Peter 1. <clears throat> Verse 12, under whom it was revealed that not under themselves, but under us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. What a privilege to labor for the conversions of souls. Our calling is high. We may enjoy the companionship of heavenly angels. We may not discern their forms, but by faith we may know. that they are with us. We need to unite, those of you that are in ministry, we need to unite with the angels. We can become the helping hand as of our Father God in teaching the gospel to others. And as we give to those in darkness the truth that has enlightened us, God will enable us to understand these truths even better. It's so very important to be in some type of ministry. Not just something that's convenient for you to do, but to have a ministry for God to, so he can come quickly and end the evil in this world. He will give us apt words to speak, communicating to us through the angel standing by our side. Let us close the windows of the soul earthward and open them heavenward. Let us not allow earthly things to take possessions of the mind, but let us keep it open to receive the communications that the heavenly angels are ready to give. Let's look Luke 15, verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Joy in heaven when one sinner repents.
Acts 7, verse 53. It speaks about people who have received the law and the disposition of angels but have not kept it. We should never have learned the meaning of the word grace had we not fallen. God loves the sinless angels, but he does not give them grace. They're sinless. Grace is an attribute of God shown to underserving human beings. We ourselves did not seek after it, but it was sent out in search of us. God's loving grace. We don't deserve a thing in our humanity. We are nothing but sinful beings. But God can use us. And through the help of angels and the Holy Spirit, we can become more like Christ. God rejoices to bestow this grace upon all who hunger for it. Not because we're worthy, but because we are so utterly unworthy. His pity, his love, and his compassion goes out to us. The condition on which we receive an increase of grace is that we improve upon the light we already have. I've heard people say, oh, I've read all of those books and I've read through the Bible three times and, and all of this. It's not good enough. You got to go back. You need to go over it. If you want to improve upon the light that you have, you need to go over it and ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance. And the angels will be there, as we have been reading, to also help you in understanding what truth is. Because there's only one truth. There's only one truth. And there's only going to be two sides before Christ comes. There's going to be Satan and his theories and false religion and, and false doctrines and even a false Ten Commandments and a false day of worship. And then there's going to be the truth and the true Sabbath and God's authority and God's day of worship and God's way of redemption through Christ Jesus our Lord who died for our sins. So we are saved by grace. But we must become like Jesus and change. And he will take the heart of stone out of us and give us a heart of flesh. Luke 4 verse 10. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. Angels that excel in strength minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation and impart to them divine power. For they become partakers of the divine nature. It is possible. Escaping the corruption that is in the world through lust. Heavenly angels are ever at the side of him who is wrestling for victory in order that while lawfully striving for the mastery, he may not be worsted in the conflict. In other words, he will not lose. He will not come out on the wrong side, but he will prevail through Christ, 
not through his own efforts, through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, through the angels by our side. 2 Kings 6, 17. Now, Elisha and his servant were surrounded by the enemy. The army was all around them and, and just mass. They, they had no chance of escape. And in 2 Kings 6, Verse 15, let's start there. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host encompassed a city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto them, Alas, my master, how shall we go? What shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. You know, Satan wants us to think that prayer is a mere form or a lot of people think that it's like a magic thing. You know, you pray and and it's just like a wish or something, you know, and it comes true. No, it, it, it's not a mere form and it, it, it avails nothing, some people think. And it, Satan cannot bear to have his powerful rival appealed to. At the sound of fervent prayer, the host of darkness trembled. Fearing that their captive may escape, they form a wall around him, that heaven's light may not reach his soul. And I know this to be true, because I have felt before that there was darkness all around me. And, and I just needed to Christ. I knew I needed Christ. But, you know, I kept faith. Even though I was allowed to go through that, I kept faith that I was in Christ Jesus. And that evil could not hurt me. So he puts a forms of wall around him that heaven's light might not reach his soul. But if in his distress and helplessness the sinner looks to Jesus, pleading the merits of his blood, and I claimed the promises of God at this time, our compassionate Redeemer listens to the earnest persevering prayer of faith and seeks and sends to his deliverance reinforcement of angels that excel in strength. And oh, how I felt the sweet peace overcome that situation and the evil had to subside and leave. And when these angels, all powerful, clothed with the armory of heaven, come to the help of the fainting, pursued soul, the angels of darkness fall back, and indeed they do, well knowing that their battle is lost and that one more soul is escaping from the power of their influence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
praise the Lord. All praise, honor, and glory to him who is able to save us, who redeemed us, who bought us with his blood, who took on all our sins at Calvary. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the powers of darkness are arrayed against us and if Satan wants to see us desert our leader, our savior, he's trying to blame all our problems on God. It's not God, it's him. He started sin and it has festered throughout the world and in people. He would be very pleased to see you disappointing the one who has done so much for you. Don't yield to his temptation. Fight bravely against his suggestions. Remember that God and Christ and heavenly angels are fighting with you. You are not alone in the warfare against wrong. Could the curtains be rolled back? You would see heavenly angels fighting with you. I love 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. And I've repeated it a lot. First Corinthians 13 verse, let's see, verse 1, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass, or a tinkling cymbal. And in verse 13, And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is love. <clears throat> I want to encourage you with this message. I want to encourage you that you can be ready because soon the Savior is coming. Matthew 13. Matthew 13, verse 49. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. It's going to be divided. Like I said before, there's going to be two sides. Matthew 24, verse 31. And then shall appear the sign, verse 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. You see, the majority of the earth is going to be lost. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 
and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Praise Jesus. Praise his name. Oh, how I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you're coming to rescue us. The earth will not destroy itself like it is doing. You will not allow people to continually be destroyed by the enemy through secret ways that are happening that most people cannot see or understand. Lord, we we're thankful that you're coming soon to stop all of this. Let's go to Matthew 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in his glory of his Father and with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. When we love Jesus, we want to do right. Angels will attend you as you come closer to Christ and learn of him. And as you learn of him, your desires change, your heart changes. It happened to me. Oh, I went to church. I took my children to church. I was doing the right things, trying to work my way to heaven. Doesn't do you any good. The peace is not in your heart. The faith is not in you that you need. You have to know Jesus Christ personally. You have to go through this book, this Bible. He is in here from Genesis all the way through to Revelation. It reveals Jesus Christ. I love you folks. I wanted to talk to you about angels that are there to help us, to keep us safe, and to defend us from evil, and that are all around us. And as we praise God, I know they rejoice. And I praise you, God, for your justness, for your grace. For your mercy. I praise you Jesus. For all you have done. For humanity. And your great love. And you went through everything we go through. And you understand and you know. And and I, I want to pray now. I want to ask you Lord. For all those watching. Lord. Give them salvation. Save them Lord. Save them and reveal to them your great love so they will understand that if they trust you, no matter what happens to them on this earth, it's okay because you're there with them. You know about it. There's a reason you explain to us one day. We praise you and honor you and glorify you. And we ask all this. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me at, with me on Mornings with Jesus.